Welcome to our midweek worship service at First United Methodist Church in Warren. The scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Romans, Romans 15, verses 4 through 13. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives you endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and your Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed and moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing the praises of your name. And again it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the people extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wants and wishes, dreams and hopes. I've given much thought to it, and I've come to the conclusion that this time of year, this season, everything connected to it can be summarized with one of those four words, wants, wishes, dreams, hopes. Spike Jones and others have sung for years, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. We visit Santa in the mall, and we are asked, what do you want for Christmas this year? My children used to look at advertisements in the evening paper and repeat time and time again, I want this and I want that and I want this and this and this. And our response as parents was always, well, put it on your list. And we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life wishes he had never been born only to eventually realize the numerous ways the world would be changed without him as they are listed by an awkward angel named Clarence attempting to get his wings. We dream of a white Christmas, just like the ones I used to know. We pull out and use mom's old cookie recipe or dad's impossible to follow fudge recipe or grandmother's ornaments, all in hopes of rekindling a feeling we had as a child in our own way. See, we're dreaming of what once was, hoping in some small way it would be again. And then there's hope. Above all else, perhaps the single most important word associated with this season, hope. This is indeed the time of year that makes us want to hope that life might be different than it is. In a world of war, we hope for peace. In a world of hatred, we hope for love. In lives of pain, we hope for healing. In homes of discord, we hope for understanding, for hope can change us and others. I'm reminded of a story written by Gary Thomas that appeared in Christianity Today in 1994 regarding an event in the early 1980s. Then Vice President George Bush represented the United States at the funeral of former Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. Bush was deeply moved by a silent protest carried out by Brezhnev's widow. She stood motionless by, by the coffin until seconds before it was closed. And then just as the soldiers touched the lid, Brezhnev's wife performed an act of great courage and hope, a gesture that must surely rank as one of the most profound acts of civil disobedience ever committed. She reached down and made the sign of the cross on her husband's chest. There in the citadel of secular, atheistic power, the wife of the man who had run it all hoped her husband was wrong. She hoped that there was another life and that that life was best represented by Jesus who died on the cross and the same Jesus might have mercy on her husband. We want things we think we need or deserve or have earned because we were not 
naughty but nice. We wish for things to be different in our lives and world, but usually we doubt that will ever, in fact, happen. We dream of what once was and what could be, but hoping is different. We can want, wish, and dream on our own, but we have hope. Because and only because of what is possible in and through a baby in a manger 2,000 years ago. When a Savior entered into our world and into our hearts and does so again this very day. Yes, this is a season of wishing and wanting and dreaming. But it is in the hoping that we can truly experience the real meaning of the season. How hopeful are you this day that Christmas this year will be special? will be meaningful, would be life-changing. Not very, I suspect, but time's running out. Perhaps the, the presents uh, have begun to be purchased, the, the cookies are starting to be made, the cards ready to be sent, the, the menu for Christmas Day is being planned, and, and the stockings aren't quite ready to be hung by the chimney with care, but soon will be. Christmas time for us today is certainly a season filled with preparing. We spend weeks, months getting ready for the 25th. In more normal years, uh, retailers would spend 11 months of the year preparing for the one month that would account for 50% of all their business. At home, we spend much time and energy uh, maybe sending cards to relatives, acquaintances that we give little thought to the rest of the year. We take time to go shopping and look and look for just the right present for that special person, only to have them ask if we kept the receipt so that it will be returned on the 26th. Yes, Christmas is a time of preparation, a time for getting ready. The only problem is we spend so much time preparing for the less important parts of the season and hardly any time at all hoping for the coming of the Christ child into our world and lives. Yet the reality is that we are little different from the world some 2,000 years ago. Those people at that time were not preparing for a Savior. They were not anxiously awaiting the birth of a Messiah, at least not one born of lowly parents in a cold, dirty cattle shed. A Messiah bringing a message of peace, forgiveness, and love. Yet this is precisely what the world received that first Christmas morning, and that is precisely the Messiah the world would reject some 33 years later and nail him to a tree and watch him die. And why did Jesus die? Because he was not what the people wanted, but, but he was what the people needed. The world needed to be saved from its sin, and that is why Jesus was born and lived and suffered and died and rose again the way he did. And that is what we celebrate this season, the coming of a Savior to the world. Our Christmas today should not be about wishing and wanting to get all the things we want this year. In fact, do we really even know what we want anymore? Instead, Christmas must be about getting what we need. And what we need is a sense of hope. What we need is a relationship with a God who loves us and desires for us to serve him in all that we do. A God that desires for each of us to share his love with one another in the world. A God of forgiveness that wants us to forgive others. A caring God who wants us to care for the needs of others. A God who himself sought out the lost and now desires for us to do the same. In this season, we celebrate the birth of a Savior whose name is Jesus. In the midst of the season that can be so full of activities and distractions, so consumed with shopping and wrapping presents, sending cards, and all the other trappings of the holiday in a normal year, and even amidst the anxiousness, uncertainty, and isolation of this pandemic year, we can be thankful. Thankful that nothing can ultimately obscure the profound truth that in Jesus, God came to be a part of us in order to free us from our own sin and self-destruction, to restore us to the fellowship with him for which we were first created, to give us reason to hope.
We must thank God for his love for us that is able to overlook our rebelliousness and forgiveness that is greater than our sin. The day for which we have been preparing for so long will soon be here. Let our prayer be that God, through us, would be present in the lives of those who need him most. Wishing and wanting things to be different doesn't really work. Dreaming of what once was but never can be again can be very painful. But hope, hope allows lives to be transformed. May God be present through us with those for whom this holiday is a difficult time. Those who are dealing with illness or family crisis or painful memories and give them hope. May God reach out to them with his comforting presence and help us to be instruments of his peace in their lives as well. And let us ask God to use us as translators of this good news that we have heard and help us to speak God's truth to those who know only tinsel and trees, but who have yet to experience the transforming grace of a relationship with Christ. May we celebrate the season by sharing his love with and giving hope to others, even as God shared his love and has given us reason to hope through Jesus Many of us make lists this time of year, lists of things we want from Santa, to-do lists that help us to organize and get things done in preparation for the 25th. But in the end, only one thing is necessary, that the God of hope will fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in him, so that we in turn may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, when we truly acknowledge the reason Christ came into the world, the list of things we need in our lives grows very short. Hope in Christ is all we really need. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Sing praises to him, all you peoples. Wants, wishes, and dreams all have their place. But it is hope that gives us all reason to rejoice and celebrate. Again, the prophet Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. Our hope this day and for all time is in the one who came to save us from our sins, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.